Hello and welcome to the fifth annual Fry Fest, a celebration of all that is Hawkeye. I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. We are on site here at the Coralville Marriott and we have plenty to bring you today. UI legend Dan Gable stops by to sign some autographs and Brad Banks headlines the latest class inducted into the UI Athletics Hall of Fame. We'll also be showing you Herky on Parade and a Hawkeye fashion show. We'll bring you that and much more from the world's largest Hawkeye trade show, but first let's kick things off with Dan Gable. It is an honor and a privilege to be joined by our next guest, UI legend so Dan Gable. Coach, thank you for joining us. Well, it's uh, a great thing to do on the uh, just about the opening kickoff, so I'm here. What are some of your favorite experiences here at Fry Fest? Well, my favorite experiences uh, really are the wrestling parts of it, but uh, I'm a little a little prejudiced there. But I'm just happy to be associated with this football weekend. And last year or the year before, and uh, you know when it, I actually got involved with it more, you know I'm really um, I've been um, impressed with uh, the fans that uh, can actually get off work today and get out here and uh, celebrate the whole weekend a day early. So I, uh, Iowa people are fanatics and uh, they love their football and they love their wrestling and they love their sports at the University of Iowa and Iowa State and UNI. So I'm just uh, proud to be an Iowan. Yeah, the fans are definitely loving the opportunity to meet an Iowa legend. Now, Coach, speak a little bit about Grand Gable, a bike race presented by the University Wrestling Club. Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty amazing that uh, uh, we can have an event like this Grand Gable, and uh, it's a bike race, and I think there's like 700 people signed up for it. A lot of them are going 100 miles. You know, I, I was going to do the 100 miles, but uh, I got too much PR work to do, so I'll just stick with a few of the miles. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, uh, proud to be associated with that. I think it's actually uh, making, a, making a, uh, a dent in helping us get Olympic wrestling back as well because there's a lot of these bike races that are all over Europe that are have the same name not Gable but uh, a grand something and and so I think whatever we're doing we're not only just putting my name on it but we're helping the sport and we may be keeping the uh, uh, wrestling back in the Olympics. Speaking of Olympic wrestling what's the latest on that fight to save the sport? Well the latest is uh, we're basically gonna have a vote September 8th and I think we're probably the favored sport to, to, to win that vote, but uh, you just can't count on it. We thought we were going to win the vote last time uh, when we went out. So whatever happens, we're going to move forward, and we're going to move forward in a better way than we've ever moved before because that's why we ended up in this position. Our guard was let down a little bit, and we can't let that happen again. Hi, I'm here with Jamie, who is the owner of Molly's Cupcakes, located in downtown Iowa City. It's your first year being open. How'd it go? A lot better than we expected. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of calories, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Personally, I absolutely love your cupcakes, I have to say. But what's it like being at Fry Fest this year? I love the energy, you know, it's what a great way to start the Hawkeye season. Um, we love working with the university and I'm just so honored that they allowed us to be a part of Fry Fest. And going with that, what do you think of the Hawkeye fans? Hawkeye fans are the best, right? Are there any other fans? <laughs> and I have to ask, what's your favorite cupcake? Peach cobbler. It's hard to beat. But here today I'd say the vanilla vanilla. Great. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you. We are joined here by our friends at the Gazette, Scott Docterman here. Scott, what's going on? game here you know kind of like the price is right except there's no real green space to win money but you can win prizes here and we have a ton of uh, photographs from Brian Ray one of the best photographers in the state in my opinion uh, we got some Gazette t-shirts we got Gazette uh, sunglasses coffee mugs I think everybody's having a good time trying to get a prize here I have to say I'm hoping for the sunglasses <laughs> yeah let's give it a shot did kind of a hard spin Ooh. What do you got? Oh, you got the mug. I got there the you go. mug. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's <laughs> see what I got. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Give me that photo. Oh, it looks like we got two oh, of God. them. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Thank cheers. you. Thank yeah. You. Cheers. Can Hartley, but the Hawks do it. Hartley sprinting back. 
Into the, it's caught, it's in, That's the good. five, yes, a touchdown. touchdown. I can't believe it. A touchdown to Marv Cook. Holy cow. Can't believe it. Six seconds to go. Hartley to Cook, and the Hawks have the lead. Well, Lauren, it's been a busy day so far. What's been your favorite part of Fry Fest? I love talking to all the Hawkeye fans, meeting them. It's been a blast. Saw you catching up with the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. What was that like? He's honestly one of my favorite people to catch up with. He's got so much insight on the season. Let's check it out. So we're standing here at the Hall of Fame panel. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing today? Well, I love being around. I'm a big history buff, so I'm always happy to be around uh, Iowa Hawkeye athletic history. And we are uh, I'll be moderating a panel today here at uh, Fry Fest with the new Hall of Fame class. Uh, and uh, Brad Banks and Craig Clemens uh, in particular from football are going in. Most people remember when Brad Banks played just 10 years ago. Had a wonderful career here at Iowa. Led him to the Orange Bowl in 02. Undefeated Big Ten season. Craig Clemens was one of my favorite Hawkeyes when I was growing up. He was the number one draft pick in the Chicago Bears. Nobody ever hit harder than Craig Clemens. If you remember what Bob Sanders played like, Craig Clemens was a Bob Sanders only bigger. And he had a wonderful career in the NFL. So uh, I'll be asking questions, soliciting questions from uh, the great Hawk fans here, and hopefully they'll ask some. Are you going to be doing some shopping today? Oh, yeah. I always, I always like to browse. I've already picked up a Niall Kinnick bobblehead doll. Dan Gable is here signing autographs, so I'll probably pick up a Gable print. So, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan like, like you and like everybody else. As football season kicks off, there's one familiar face Hawkeye fans guaranteed to see every Saturday, and that's Herky the Hawkeye. You may have noticed since 2004, several Herky statues similar to this one have been on display throughout the Iowa City area. Here at Fry Fest, they will unveil the latest class of Herky on parade. But first, let's take a look back over the years at Herky the Hawkeye. My name is Rick Klatt. I'm an Associate Athletic Director at the University of Iowa. And on behalf of a lot of people, particularly Iowans and Hawk fans and members of our Chambers of Commerce and the communities of uh, Iowa City, University Heights, University of Iowa, and Coralville, um, I am very, very pleased today to publicly and officially introduce a little program that we've been working on for a few months called Herky on Parade. The University of Iowa was looking to do something big to celebrate the renovation of Kinnick Stadium. We made 75 in the original uh, flock there of 2004. Right after we launched them and rolled them all out on the streets, uh, we got quite a bit of feedback on some that the community thought we missed. Uh, you know, there, we did 75, but we didn't do a wrestler herky. And in this part of the state and country, you better have a wrestler herky. Uh, and there were a number of others, so we came out with what we called the Diamond Edition, uh, which added another 15 herkies for a grand total of 90 throughout the community. We worked with a sculptor out of Nebraska uh, to develop the original fiberglass mold. And then at that point, we sent out uh, basically a solicitation to all artists uh, in every database that we could get our hands on to come in, take part in this great public art exhibit and work with local sponsors to create something special uh, uh, for the event and a way to present Herky. We started at 10 o'clock at night with the entire junior class of the Iowa football team. Uh, we had four teams. We call it the Alpha Bravo and Charlie Delta install teams. We were all in black and from about 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. Uh, uh, we installed all Herkies at the same time. The next morning at 8 a.m. was the Monday of the month when the uh, local community test their tornado sirens and we use that as our official cue all over the community for those sponsors and those artists to officially unveil their herky to the community. In 2004 we did the pose as you see kind of behind me. Uh, in 2014 we're going to do a little bit different pose. Uh, herky has been modified slightly by the University of Iowa and uh, that's it's pretty exciting. Uh, he'll be in a stand-up sort of Superman pose for this this uh, edition of Herky Arm Parade, and I think the community are, is going to be pretty excited about it. We've already seen a couple of the early designs. Uh, those designs will be shown uh, and were shown at Fry Fest, and uh, folks can see those on the website soon when that launches in, uh, in early October.
Welcome back to the Hawkeye Network's coverage of Fry Fest. I'm joined here by three ladies who prove that football is not just for the men. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Hey. Hi. What are some of your favorite experiences of Fry Fest and what brings you out here today? Well, we are here representing Ladies Football Academy. We are heading into our fourth event that we raise uh, funding dollars for Children's Hospital. So this year, this coming year, 2014, the event is June 7th, and so people can register with a $50 registration and then a minimum of a $500 uh, fundraising come June. So we are here signing people up. It's a great event. You can see um, ladies get on the field with the coaches, with the players. I mean, Kirk uh, Ferentz and all of these coaches are right there. It's kind of football 101 for the ladies. It's awesome. On Kinnick Field. It's, it's an awesome time. It's also for an awesome call, cause. The Ladies Football Academy raised over $250,000 this year, and their three-year total is over $700,000. What's this money going to be used for? Initially, it's going to be used for the new children's hospital. You see we have a rendering here of uh, the outside of the uh, building that's under construction today. We pledged a million dollars to it, and we're almost there. We're hoping next year, 2014, puts us over the million-dollar mark. Well, we certainly wish them the best. It's a great cause. It's a great program. And all you ladies out there, please feel free. Sign up today because you're missing out on a great time. We're now going to throw it to the first annual Hawkeye Fashion Show to show off some of that black and gold swag. Let's go out of kicking with the boys and the gals. Wear your dress and bring my ring. Someone's gonna get it, ain't gonna be me. Lucy, Lucy, my gal. Lucy, Lucy, my sweet. Lucy, Lucy, my gal. I was just gonna hit him, but I'm gonna kill him now. Thank you, and go Hawks! All right, Eric, I told you my favorite part about today. What's yours, Ben? My favorite part, really, catching up with all the Hawkeye legends. Met up with Coach Gable earlier, and there was one other familiar face many Hawkeye fans might recognize. He's actually the leading tackler in football history. Do you know who it is? Chad Greenway. Close. He's a great linebacker, but we have one that's even better. 1985 <laughs> was the last year he played, and it is none other than Larry Station. The program has seen several other fantastic linebackers, Abdul Hodge, Chad Greenway, Pat Anger, even this current group, James Morris, Hitchens, Kirksey. Uh, Kirksey. Yes. What do you see in, the, in their games that's similar to yours? Well, I think, you know, with any of the great players, I think the number one thing is effort. I mean, you got to have good athleticism, but, I mean, just giving 100 percent effort every play, that's the key. I mean, and you can watch some of these players, and sometimes you can see they kind of give up if the play is not coming towards them, then they don't really hustle to get to the other side of the field. Whereas these guys, uh, like Morris and some of the guys you mentioned, I mean, they're going 100% until the play is done. And that's how I try to play, too. And, and I think that's what you have to do, really, to make a mark. Now, this whole Fry Fest is in honor of Coach Hayden Fry. What impact did he have on your career? Well, goodness, I mean, just to even be in Iowa City is because of Coach Fry. I mean, just his... Uh, tradition in terms of uh, playing the best players. I mean, that was one of the things I wanted to come here and know that if I was the best player as a freshman, I would be able to play even then. So, and at Nebraska at the time, you know, they definitely had the tendency to red shirt freshmen. And so I was happy to come here and uh, fortunately stay healthy enough to actually start four years. And, and like I said, to actually have a, a all time tackle record even now. It's been a wild day here in Coralville. Another successful Fry Fest. Great to see all the black and gold fans turn out and support the Hawkeyes. Yeah, you can really see the loyalty that these fans have for their Hawkeye team. And you can really sense the excitement in the building for the upcoming seasons. And with that, we're going to send it over to the Cup Rally. We'll see you next Friday. <laughs> see what I did there? For Eric Don, I'm Lauren Moss. We'll see you next year.